So the Philadelphia 76ers dominate the Bulls at the Wells Fargo Center behind a monstrous game from Joel Embiid. The Sixers are now 5-0 with James Harden. We are going to break everything down. Let's go. Perfect. 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 Man, what a game. Another impressive, great performance from this Sixers team. Bouncing back from a tough one on Saturday. They dropped the second of a back-to-back to Miami without James Harden. They come right back, and it's like they never left. It's like Harden never even missed the game, right? The Sixers back in action. A tough, gritty game in the first half, back and forth. But the Sixers muscle it home. And again, they go on a monstrous run in the third quarter, and they never look back. And it's weird. It really is weird. Again, I am so cool, calm, collected, composed, whatever you want to use to describe it. Like, for once, we don't have to experience heart attack every game, every night, down to the wire, right? Like, I just knew the Sixers were going to pull this out. Why? Because we have one of the most lethal duos, maybe trios, in the NBA. And the Sixers team, once again, comes through, and they get the big buckets late, and they step up their defense from the first half, and they do it. This is the version of the Sixers team we have been dreaming for for weeks Months, years, and however much longer you've been alive. It's just, it's beautiful. It really is beautiful. What is going on, everybody? Welcome on into Philly Take with RB, your number one hotspot for Sixers. Coverage 24-7 IMRB. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you get all the notifications for the content. Shout out to everybody who was watching the game live with me. It was a lot of fun once again. I just got done listening to the post-game press conferences a little while ago, and... Man, it was it was absolutely beautiful. I can't wait to tell you about what Joel Embiid said. What a freaking game. You know, a couple bad games. I heard a lot of people talking down on him, this, this, and that. Joel Embiid once again comes out and proves why he is the MVP. But the Sixers get the W at the Wells Fargo tonight, 121 to 106. I originally had said before Friday's game that if they had uh won three out of the next four, then I would be a very very happy camper. They beat the Cavs. They lost to Miami without James Harden, but to be quite honest, you know, they kept it pretty close for most of the game, and if Harden had played, who knows? We could have even won that game, but that's, you know, here and there. Um, We go and get the win tonight against the Chicago Bulls. Then we have Brooklyn on Thursday. If we win Thursday, I will be very, very happy. I've seen so many things I love from this team, um, and they just keep getting it done. They keep getting it done. Another game with 120-plus. We have to be averaging 120-plus since Harden arrived to the squad, we are now 5-0 and with James Harden. Embiid and Harden, the chemistry is there. They actually, you know, for the first time forever, <laughs> missed on a pick and roll tonight. It was the first time I saw any miscommunication. But for the most part, they just shredded a defense. And it was led by the MVP of the league. That's right, the MVP, Joel Embiid. I'm going to tell you uh, about why. Shout out to my guy Josh Reynolds on Twitter. Great follow. Definitely uh, check him out. He said, I'm beat at 43, 14, and three blocks in a win against the fourth place Bulls. But let's talk about his Vorp <laughs> and Raptor. Yo, there's, there's so many people out there hating on Joel Embiid. They don't want to see us win. The Sixers went to the free throw line and shot 34 free throws. Every night it's going to be like this. Three hour games. They hate us. The media hates us. Everybody hates us. Okay. I'm used to it at this point. At this, you know, I mean, who cares anymore? We're just going to keep our head down, keep winning games, keep playing. I mean, I wouldn't even. Put it past them using Saturday's game as, as a basis for their their logical arguments, right? Their logical arguments. Um, not not even knowing that Harden didn't play. But anyway, uh, Sixers get it done. And, you know, for anybody that wants to hate on Joel Embiid, he is the most dominating player in the league. He is unbelievable. Again, 43 points tonight, 15 for 27 from the field, 12 for 16 from the line. And, you know, the, the best thing that I heard tonight was from Joel Embiid in his press conference. And you know what he said? He, first off, he took accountability. Wow, I mean, how hard is it to do that, right? Take accountability for your mishaps. He said, the last two games, I just haven't been me. I haven't been aggressive. And then he said, tonight, I chose that I was going to go to the basket. That's a, a summation of what he said. He said, I just decided, you know, I'm going to go into the paint. I'm going to be a monster, and I'm going to get it done. He didn't even come out on fire like that. He didn't even come out being aggressive right away. Yet, yeah, Tristan Thompson had... <laughs> Had five fouls uh, in the third quarter, halfway through the third quarter. And the Sixers just came out, and once in B started being dominant, there was just no looking back. Um, you know, the Philadelphia 76ers, 
They came out hot as a team. I mean, other guys were stepping up at first. We had six three-pointers halfway through the first quarter. We had seven last game as a whole. That was a historically bad shooting night last game. Seven for 41 from deep. Tonight, 12 for 30, 40%. You know, it's just about if your shooters are on, and tonight the space was there. And, and hmm, wonder, I wonder why. Uh, it's because of what I call the circuit board, James Harden, who, again, connects all the pieces, right? He connects everything, makes everything better. You can just see it's night and day difference with James Harden on the floor. Here's an interesting stat about Joel Embiid and James Harden because Joel Embiid did have a double-double, obviously, again, 14 rebounds a night. He also had a monster defensive game, three blocks, two steals, just one of those insane back-in-the-day, earlier this season, Joel Embiid games. Um, but the last two players with 10 or more 40-point double-doubles in a season, Joel Embiid this season and James Harden in his MVP year in 2018. It's absolutely insane. Joel Embiid has 10 10 40 point triple or uh, four, four, 10 40 point double doubles this season. 10. We're not even done yet. We have 18 games to go. And, uh, you know, it's it, the craziest thing about it is that, um, you know, the next guy has six. The next guy has four, then two. Like the people that wanted to throw Joel in the dirt, this guy had a couple off games. He's still the man. He's still dominating. He is unstoppable when he wants to be. And again, he said, I'm going to go to the rack and get it done. Joel Embiid led the squad tonight. Nobody else really stepped up. Nobody else had an amazing night. And that spoke volumes to me. Because finally, one night where Harden didn't even have the best offensive night. But, but he didn't have a bad offensive night. Why? Because although he went 5 for 15 from the field with 16 points, he had 14 dimes and 8 rebounds. He almost had a triple-double. We used to settle for a man who would not shoot a jump shot, giving us eight assists tonight, who was supposed to be an all-time facilitator, an unbelievable facilitator. James Harden has given us 14 in his sleep. He's given us 12, 13. It's easy. Harden is a wizard. I, I say it every time. I'm not going to keep you know harping on it. He's a wizard. He sees the whole floor. He hits Steibel on these cuts. Steibel had 12 points tonight. Matisse Steibel has gotten 10 times better with James Harden, not even shooting the ball, which he still needs to do. But Thibel had a great game tonight, and he's cutting to the basket. He's fine in the back door. Harden hits him. He's behind the back dish. It's beautiful. It really is a full product to see. Um, Tobias Harris had eight points tonight, four for ten from the field. Uh, only three rebounds. Would like to see him be more aggressive in that aspect. Had a couple nice defensive possessions. Tyrese Maxey had 17 points tonight on 13 attempts. But really, Maxey and Tobias both played bad. This was the first time Maxey really did not play well with James Harden. And Joel Embiid. But you know what the crazy thing is? Is that even though James Harden didn't even have the most lethal scoring night, and Tyrese Maxey and Tobias Harris played bad, the Sixers still won this game by 15 points. And they were up by almost 20 at one point. Because that's how dominating we are. It doesn't matter. Like, somebody can just go off on this team, and we can get points so easy. And, and the game is never up in the air like it used to be. It's never a concern like, wow, will we be able to score points? No, we will. We just have to lock up our defense, man. Our defense, again, you know, we're, we're here and there. Uh, we we got to become more consistent. We really lock it in in the second half, but uh, the first half definitely needs to improve um, in that aspect. Also, James Harden running steps after the game like he's uh, like he's rocky, man. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's just crazy, man. Uh, this guy was painted out to be a terrible teammate player. He wants to win, man. He wants to win bad. I listened to him talk. Um, you know, he said there was no motivation for next game against Brooklyn. Doc Rivers also said that Ben should get a tribute video and this, this, and that. He also joked around saying the Sixers fans are, are so quiet, so nothing will happen. Doc said the politically correct thing. Harden, I believe, he, he really doesn't care. He's just going to go out there and, and, and knock down shots. And uh, the, game, the, the next game is going to be absolutely insane. We will be live for that, by the way. Sixers and Nets. Apparently, Ben will show up on the bench. I mean, he's doing it to himself at that point. He, honestly, I'm trying to help. I'm trying to warn you. Don't come. It's not going to end well for you. Um, but we'll see what happens. I mean, Sixers fans are going to, you know, remind him, uh, you know, how poorly he handled that situation. But, man, we're happy. We're sitting on a pedestal. You know, I mean, th this team's looking really, really good. They're looking really good. We shot 40% from three tonight. Uh, we knocked down our free throws again, 34 <laughs> free throws. And I, it was lopsided at one point. The rest, you know, tried to help the, the Bulls get back in it a little bit in that aspect. But, you know, the, the the one thing that's still lacking from this team is rebounding. I still think we need to improve in that area, and it's concerning. It is. Um, 
when we don't attack the boards, when Tobias only has three, like Harden is our second best rebounder on his team. He's eight a night, eight a night. Um, we need other guys to get aggressive. I just hate when we when we stand around and watch uh, rebounds. I feel like we could be a lot more aggressive and just be, you know, re- just really um, hungry in the paint. You know, if we do that, this team is, I, I mean, it's going to be nuts. It's going to be nuts trying to stop this team. Uh, I thought Doc Rivers had an excellent night. I have to give him credit. Doc Rivers probably had the three best adjustments tonight that I've seen in a while. Um, Doc Rivers uh, sat Furkan Korkmaz, so Furkan Korkmaz uh, did not play at all in this game. I thought he would get some garbage time minutes. He didn't even play. Uh, Doc Rivers said I had enough of that. He put in Isaiah Joe, who was a little bit iffy. It seems like he's kind of in a cold streak since he didn't really uh, get a lot under his belt. You know, Shake Milton only took one shot tonight. I wanted to see a little more aggression from Shake, but hey, our bench stepped up courtesy of George Niang. I mean, what else can you say about this guy? He even had one mistake tonight where he passed up an open three, which is very uncharacteristic. But the reason I love George Niang is because he has no fear. He has no fear. 14 points, four for seven from deep. He's almost a perfect complement with Harden and Embiid because unlike Tobias, he's not going to over dribble. He's just going to spot up. He's going to find his shots. And when Harden hits him with a no look time, it doesn't matter who's in his face. Niang is letting it fly. Once again, another great game. I think he had 17 last game, 14 this game. One of the most underrated bench piece pickups of the offseason in the entire NBA. He's been absolutely amazing. He talks his smack. He gets the energy levels up. I mean, he's talking crap to the bench. That's what George Niang does, and he plays scrappy D, and he just keeps getting better and better. We need a consistent bench to go far with this team, um, and guys like George Niang are going to anchor that, and I'm just really proud of how the dude's playing, man. He's been he's been absolutely amazing. Um, Danny Green, I thought, was actually playing some good defense for once. Uh, he had one three in this game. And then when he makes the two best defensive plays I've seen from him all year, he injures his finger. I don't know if he broke it or they said lacerated or what. Um, it's just it's crazy how that goes, man. But Danny Green, hopefully he's all right. He can get back. Um, he actually was playing good defense. By the way, um, continue on what I said about Doc Rivers because he had a great coaching night. Um, the second adjustment I thought he made, which was really, really superb, in the first quarter, DeRozan got off to a quick 10. He was guarded by Tobias Harris. And then Doc started to trap up top. Now, our PNR defense, we still need to, to work on that. Um, but, yeah, we started to trap DeRozan. He ended up going cold. He finished the game 6 for 17 from the field. Levine, 8 for 19. I thought, again, Thibel did an amazing job on him. Um, and other than that, I thought we just we, we got through. And, again, it's like it's, you know, it's guys here and there that step up. But this team is just so good. And Harden and Embiid can get you a bucket at any time. And the fact that Maxi didn't even play that well tonight until the fourth quarter, it just goes to show how cutthroat these two are. Um, and and it's, a, it's sensational, man. It really is. Uh, the last guy I wanted to talk about, save him best for last, right? DeAndre Jordan. Again, welcome to Philadelphia. It's, it's absolutely hilarious um, how every you know time we sign a backup center, Sixers fans overreact. I make the video and I say, yo, let's give the guy a chance. Let's relax. I got to be honest. Here's the stats. Shout out to my guy, Harrison Grimm. Another great follow, man. Um, you know, 10 minutes of play, which we'll probably see in the playoffs. Two points, three rebounds, two assists, a steal and a block, and a, a minus zero. I mean, DeAndre Jordan looked good to me. He looked quicker. He looked like he was in shape a little bit. He, he didn't overdo anything. He just set big body screens, played defense, grabbed the rebounds. That's it. That's all we need. And I, he didn't look as bad as everybody made him out to be. Again, just like Andre Drummond. Just like Dwight Howard, I thought DJ looked good in his debut. Now, we're obviously going to have to see more of that. But, man, DeAndre Jordan did exactly what I thought he would as a veteran with leadership experience um, playing under Doc Rivers. And he looked rejuvenated. He looked happy. We wanted to play. I mean, look, it, I think DeAndre Jordan is going to be just fine, and I think we have our new backup center. So hopefully he can keep doing the things he did tonight. Overall, a great team win, a great team win from the Sixers. Obviously, Embiid was the show. I don't even have to talk about Embiid. Like, there's so many games this year where he just goes off 10 40-point double-doubles. That, that's insane. That is insane. He is the MVP of the league. There have been a lot of great players, but Joel is that guy. Um, and the Sixers are now 5-0 and with Harden. On to the next one against Brooklyn. High stakes, high energy. We need to win that game, go 3 out of 4 and I'll be a happy camper, man. I think the Sixers will get it done, and I'm really, really, really happy and confident 
with what I'm seeing from this team right now. That is pretty much all my thoughts. I would love to hear from you. What are your takes on the game? Give me all your thoughts. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And like always, I will catch you on the next one, man. Peace. Perfect. Perfect.